you're planning a barbecue. The forecast says sunny skies, so you stock up on burgers, invite your friends, and fire up the grill. Then, just as you're flipping the first patty, the heavens open up and dump rain all over your backyard. Suddenly, your perfect Saturday looks more like a wet t-shirt contest you never signed up for. Sound familiar? For all the radar dishes, satellites, and billion-dollar supercomputers, weather forecasts still get it wrong. Sometimes buy a little, sometimes buy a lot. But why shouldn't we, in the year of self-driving cars and AI chatbots, be able to tell if it's going no. to rain tomorrow? The answer lies in the messy chaotic, and downright stubborn nature of Earth's atmosphere. Forecasting weather is like trying to predict the mood swings of a toddler hopped up on sugar. There are patterns, but they're maddeningly hard to nail down. Let's start with the basics. Weather is the state of the atmosphere, temperature, humidity, pressure, wind, precipitation at a given time and place. That sounds simple enough. But here's the kicker. The atmosphere is a chaotic system. Chaos theory tells us that small differences in starting conditions can lead to huge differences later. You've probably heard the phrase the butterfly effect. The idea that a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil could set off a tornado in Texas. While that's a bit of an exaggeration, the principle is real. The atmosphere is so sensitive that even the tiniest errors in measurements, say one thermometer being off by a fraction of a degree can ripple forward into big forecast errors a few days later. In other words, we can't measure every molecule of air. And because of that, our forecasts are always working with incomplete data. To make a forecast, scientists need to know the current state of the atmosphere. That means measuring temperature pressure, humidity, and wind all over the planet from the surface to the upper atmosphere. Sounds straightforward until you realize how massive that job is. Think about the oceans. They cover 70% of Earth's surface, and we don't exactly have weather stations floating in neat little grids across the Pacific. Most of that data comes from satellites or the occasional buoy. That leaves gaps, big gaps. And even on land where we have thousands of weather stations, balloons, and radar towers, there are still blind spots. Try putting a weather station on the peak of every mountain or in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Not happening. Bottom line, our snapshot of the atmosphere is never complete. Forecast models start with imperfect data, and imperfections only grow as they simulate the future. Once scientists have their data, they feed it into numerical weather prediction models. These are basically huge sets of equations that describe how air, water, and energy move around the planet. The equations themselves are solid physics doesn't lie. The problem is solving them is incredibly complex. Even the fastest supercomputers in the world have to simplify things. They divide the atmosphere into a 3D grid of boxes, maybe 5 to 10 kilometers wide each. Within each box, the computer calculates average values for temperature, wind, and so on. Sounds clever, right? But here's the catch. Weather doesn't always play nicely inside neat boxes. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, and local sea breezes happen on scales smaller than the grid can capture. That's why your forecast might say partly cloudy with a 30% chance of rain, while in reality, your neighbor gets drenched and your yard stays bone dry. Here's another frustrating truth. Forecasts get worse the further out they go. One, three days ahead, usually pretty accurate. Five, seven days ahead, you'll get a general idea. Warmer, colder weather. But specifics start to blur. Ten days ahead, take it with a grain of salt or maybe a whole salt shaker. Beyond two weeks, basically useless for day-to-day -day weather. Why? Because chaos takes over. Even time Tiny errors in today's measurements blow up exponentially as the model projects further. By two weeks, the forecast has essentially lost the signal. This doesn't mean long-term predictions are impossible climate models, which deal with averages over decades work differently. But for your Saturday picnic, don't expect a three-week forecast to be trustworthy. Of course, technology has made forecasts way better than they used to be. The launch of weather satellites in the 1960s was a game-changer. For the first time, we could see storms forming over the oceans, track hurricanes, and monitor clouds across the globe. Today's satellites measure everything from sea surface temperatures to water vapor in the atmosphere. They give us a global picture which fills in a lot of those data gaps. Without them, modern forecasting would be blind. But even satellites have limits. They see the tops of clouds, not the rain inside them. They estimate conditions below the surface but can't measure directly. They're amazing tools but still just pieces of the puzzle. Closer to home, Doppler radar helps meteorologists track rainfall hail and tornado-producing storms in real time. Radar can show the speed and direction of raindrops letting forecasters see rotation inside a thunderstorm before a tornado even forms. That's why tornado warnings today often come with minutes of lead time instead of seconds. But radar is short range, it only covers a few hundred miles around each station. And interpreting radar data is tricky. Again, the tools are powerful but imperfect. Ever notice how forecasts are usually mostly right for the big picture, but often wrong in the details? That's geography at work. Predicting a storm system over half the country is easier than predicting whether your specific town will get rain. At 3 p.m., local factors, 
hills, lake sea breezes, even the shape of a city can nudge storms in unpredictable ways. That's why you sometimes hear forecasters hedge with a 40% chance of showers. What they're really saying is the atmosphere is ripe for rain, but we can't say exactly where it'll fall. It's like predicting popcorn. You know, the kernels will pop, just not which ones or when. Weather models are mind-bogglingly complex. To simulate the atmosphere, you need to solve millions of equations for millions of little boxes covering the planet. That takes power, massive computing power. The world's leading weather centers like the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts ECMWF, and the U.S. National Weather Service run their models on some of the fastest supercomputers on Earth. These machines crunch numbers at quadrillions of calculations per second, trying to stay ahead of nature. Today's seven-day forecast is as good as the three-day forecast was just 30 years ago. That's a huge leap. But here's the catch. No matter how fast the computers get, they can't overcome the chaos built into the system. It's like playing chess against the atmosphere. You can calculate 20 moves ahead, but eventually the board explodes and resets itself. One way scientists are improving forecasts is by shrinking the size of those grid boxes in the models. Instead of 10 kilometers across, they're aiming for one kilometer or less. That lets the models capture thunderstorms, sea breezes, and local quirks that used to fall between the cracks. But smaller boxes mean way more calculations. It's the difference between sketching a map with a fat marker and drawing it pixel by pixel. The finer the resolution, the clearer the picture, but also the heavier the load on the computer. That's why supercomputers aren't just helpful, they're essential. Lately, AI has stepped onto the scene. Machine learning systems can sift through mountains of weather data spot patterns humans might miss, and even run fast and dirty forecasts in seconds instead of hours. Google's AI team, for example, developed models that can predict rainfall with surprising accuracy just a few hours out a critical window for flash floods. Other AI systems help refine long-range forecasts by blending outputs from different models. Does this mean AI will replace traditional physics-based models? Not likely. Think of AI as a clever assistant. It can highlight patterns, fine-tune predictions, and deliver quick updates. But the heavy lifting of atmospheric physics still needs the old-fashioned equations. Here's where things get even trickier. Climate change isn't just about global averages. It's also messing with the patterns forecasters rely on. Storms are shifting. Warmer oceans fuel stronger hurricanes, sometimes forming earlier or lasting longer than expected. Rainfall is harder to predict. Warmer air holds more moisture, which means when it rains, it can really pour. Jet streams are wobbling. Melting Arctic ice may be changing high-altitude winds that steer weather systems, making them stall or meander unpredictably. Forecasting relies on historical patterns, but if the climate itself is changing, yesterday's patterns may not apply tomorrow. Imagine trying to predict a basketball game while someone quietly changes the rules every quarter. Technology aside, forecasts are still made by humans, and humans have to decide how to communicate uncertainty. When a meteorologist says a 40% chance of rain, most people interpret that as it will rain 40% of the time or 40% of the area will get rain. In reality, it means based on current data, 40% of the possible outcomes include rain at your location. That nuance gets lost. Forecasts sound wrong, not because the science failed, but because the message wasn't clear. In the end, forecasting is about managing uncertainty, not eliminating it. The sky will always have a few surprises up its sleeve. So maybe the lesson is this, keep an umbrella in the trunk sunscreen in the bag, and a little humility about how much control humans really have over the weather.